All right, I'm back. And we got an unboxing today. And the Shaveridge is Stokes Fresh Hop Lager. So, <clears throat> it kind of looks like um, cigarettes, doesn't it? I don't know what the hell they were going with that one. But, um, yeah. Fresh Hop Lager. Stokes from Boss Rambler Beer Club. Uh, I just recently discovered Boss Rambler Re Beer Club. They're out of Bend, Oregon. And the two that I've had so far have been pretty good. So let's uh, let's try this one out. Let's see if it gives us anything. Boss Rambler's Warning. Drinking Stokes Fresh causes high stoke levels, good times, beer envy, and may complicate work plans. Grab a pack of Stokes. Live the light beer life. <laughs> so you can see that there. That's pretty uh pretty cool. Um, let's see. Does it give us anything else? Nope. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and crack into it. And my no nails have an ass. I'm a nail biter. And I'm not nervous or anxious. I don't know. I've just done it my whole fucking life. It's gross, but it is what it is. Uh, cheers. Pretty damn good. Light, crisp, refreshing. And then there is a decent hop bite. But it's still on the very drinkable, crushable. It's a, it, it does have hop character, but it's mellow. So there's that. <clears throat> Alright, let's get into the unboxing. The first one we're looking at today in the box here was sent to me uh, by J.B. Broman, uh, my boy. He has been a, a good supporter of the channel recently. He let me borrow the carbon with the three different base plates. Um, he's just been real cool, and our friendship just came out of fucking nowhere. But um, he's been a cool guy, and dude, I appreciate you, bro. So thank you for sending this along. We have our unboxing knife right here, as always. The Benchmade. Let's see. <clears throat> it's always um, a bit nerve-wracking when somebody sends something to me that has, um, you know, a good amount of value. I don't want to be the reason why um, it gets, you know, lost in the mail or something like that. I very, very much appreciate it. Um, you know, the people that take risks sending their stuff for me to try. I think that is, you know, awesome. You know, the wet shaving community thrives off of uh, sharing with each other and um, letting, you know, swapping samples and swapping gear and trying before you buy. Since it's not much of a thing in the wet shaving world, or some artisans do it and others don't, helping each other out as community members uh, really goes a long way. And it's kind of a paramount feature of our community. Anyways, let's get into it. We got all bubble wrapped up inside the box. He put it in a little leather, or not a leather, like a little burlap sheath here. And let me just get all these things out. Here's another little burlap um, bag. Let me just get each individual piece out here. Okay. And then he has all of them wrapped up in green paper, so bear with me. Maybe not the most riveting uh, um, unboxing here, but let me just get everything out of the paper, and then we'll show the uh, final product. So, it looks like what we have here is a DE razor with two different base plates. So, got it all put together here. And don't mind the, uh, the, you know, gruff or smut on the top. But look at that. Very nice knurling, whatever it is. Uh, oh, actually, I think I know what this is. This is the uh, Home-like Shaving Calibri, if I remember correctly. That is in a totally another language, but if you can kind of see down there. I don't even know if I'm holding it right side up. Russian letters are foreign to me. There you go. Now you can see that one a lot better. 
and you can see my janky ass fingernail. Um, so it looks like we got one standard bar and one open comb. So thank you, uh, JB, for sending this along. The Calibri razor with one standard bar, one open comb. It looks like the open comb has a gap of 1.3 and the standard bar, get out of here, fly. The standard bar has a gap of 1.5. So this should be interesting. I all, I'll obviously do more research before I do the video on this razor, but I do have the home like start razor, the original one. I guess they're coming out with the number two, which that's pretty exciting. But um, the home like start really, really enjoyed it, and that's an open comb offering. And so these are, this is a whole nother razor of theirs, the Calibri, and we got two more base plates to play with and and test out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I always appreciate when anybody sends me, you know, saving gear, shaving soap, aftershave, uh, whatever the fuck. If you send something to my channel for me to use it, I appreciate it. And JB, I appreciate you, bro, your friendship and the your support of my channel. I appreciate that, man, really. And anybody else who's ever done it in the past, I appreciate you guys too. All right, let us move on. I'm going to try to preserve some of these packaging supplies so when I send it back, it'll be at least on par with the way he sent it to me. We got another box here. Uh, medium flat rate. Always nice to see priority packaging in use. Job security, baby. <laughs> I work at the post office, so. Okay. And I always open from the bottom. Because I don't, uh, I don't want to show the address. My mom, viewer of the channel, friend of the channel. <laughs> my mom once told me on the onset of my channel, uh, don't show your address. You never know. Somebody, you know, want to cause harm to you. Fucking show up at my front door and see what happens. <laughs> Anyways. Um, very interesting kind of net on the bottom here. Very interesting indeed. Let's check this out. So I took the, the top off. It looks like it had like this paper netting on the top portion too. No note though. It's kind of a nice way to package really. Never seen that before. All right, and then we have multiple priority envelopes that have been used as like stuffing or protection. So let's, uh, let's get each one of those uh, individually opened here. Now I like it when I see priority envelopes in use like this. I also don't like it. I, I feel like it's kind of a waste, but since it's free packaging, I understand why people do it. I do it, but it does seem kind of like a waste to me. Get these open. I'm gonna have to get brisk. <laughs> okay, one down. Grab the knife. Don't want to hurt ourselves. Getting in a hurry. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to take another swig. This is taking it out of me. Alright. This got awkward. Had a very good day at work today. Monday is usually a very busy day. A very hectic day at the post office, but today wasn't so bad, so got to take your wins when you get them. Alright, we are getting closer. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. <clears throat> but, I will say, the packaging on these items pretty superb. So, I'm not uh, definitely thumbs up in that area. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, so first things first, we have Ariana and Evans Indigo Ink. Now this is one that before it released, it was just kind of being teased and marketed. I was very interested. I like the artwork and the scent notes are very interesting. Ink, resins, absinthe, ylang-ylang, coumarin, tonka, leather, incense, incense, 
oud and wood. So very interesting indeed. I like the little plastic cover. That's kind of something that uh, the Razor Company does and it's something that I appreciate. Let's crack this open and, and take a whiff since we're here, huh? This is also in the K2 formula. So if you can see right there, Kaizen 2, that's the little symbol for Kaizen 2. And I don't know. I guess I'll let you see the ingredients if you're unfamiliar with them. A lot, a lot of ingredients, laundry list of ingredients. But if you're familiar with um, A&E and the Shaving Shop Club, you'll know that very high quality stuff. I like it. I like it. This is a good one. It's interesting. It's very interesting. It's not as deep, dark, um, foreboding as I thought it was going to be. Um, to be honest, with the oud and the incense and the leather and the woods, I thought it was going to be much more uh, deep, dark, and, um, you know, kind of leaning towards a cold weather scent, definitely like fall, winter type scent. I don't think it gets that dark, and I think I rubbed some on my nose, um, but damn, <laughs> tells you how much I like it, I'm getting really close. It has a nice, maybe medium scent strength off the puck, but it's kind of like that middle of the road. It's not super light and fresh, it's not super dark and foreboding, foreboding. it's just kind of like right down the middle, one of those scents that you could probably wear all year round. Man, I can't wait to lather that up and more so get some of the aftershave on and really experience what this scent is about. I think it's going to be a winner for me. There's a look at the aftershave bottle. This is not their normal bottle. I believe the only reason that they're using these is just for, um, uh, because of supply chain issues. They just can't get their normal stock of bottles. And so this is what they're kind of dealing with in the interim. But um, I have seen the restrictors, and I'll tell you right now, they're piss poor. <laughs> that is what we call a hashtag shit stricter. This is a shit stricter. <laughs> um, be careful. If you receive one of these bottles, be careful when pouring that. Uh, put your finger over the, uh, the opening you know, or your thumb to reduce the opening. That way you can uh, make sure you're not overusing your product or, or worse, spilling and wasting the product. Um, but their aftershave splash, really good stuff. One of my favorite aftershaves, honestly. Oh no. Damn. Really shitty restrictor. Look at this, guys. This, this just happened. Definitely something to be aware of. A little bit, a little bit leaked over the side and touched the label and it smeared off. That just happened right now. I just showed you guys the ingredients. And then I got a little bit on my fingers. You saw me wipe it on my neck. Apparently some got on the label and look what happened. Fucking bummer. So definitely, definitely play. <laughs> Pour out the back. When you're pouring these aftershaves, pour out the back side that doesn't have any label on it. That way, if there is any leakage, it leaks out the back and it doesn't ruin your label. That's an old school problem right there. I would not expect A&E to be doing that in this day and age. Hopefully, that's just a supply chain fucking issue. I would not have expected that. Damn. Got a little bit on my fingertips and it got that side too. Bummer. Okay, I'll have to be careful with that one. And I'm just over here using my towel to to wipe my hands and the bottle down. I don't want that label to get ruined because it's a fucking nice label. Okay, let's not let that get us down. <clears throat> Alright, we got two more offerings here. I had to get in on this. Pedro Fiasco's Legendary Shaving Soap. And this is their new budget offering from Ariana and Evans. Um, simplistic stuff. This is a shave soap in puck form, no jar, 
no box. It just has um, some simple um, paper wrapping, and then it looks like it was shrink wrapped for shipping purposes. But that's it. It's just a budget shave soap, and we'll get more into the price and all of that um, when we use it, but that's it. Um, he kind of markets that it's made with beer, and so that is the main attraction for me. I like budget um, offerings, and I love it when budget offerings are good and noteworthy, but you know me, man. I'm a beer guy. As soon as it says made with beer, I've tried pretty much every fucking made with beer shave soap that's came out since I started the hobby, and um, I had to jump all over this. So we got two different scents, and it doesn't look like they mention the, the, um, the notes on the front. But he does put a little sticker on the back. So this one's boysenberry. And it's not the whole scent. Because it was boysenberry and something else. And then this one was pomegranate and something else. So they're not they're not one note scents. If anything, they're two note scents. I just can't remember which is which. I think they're both like fruit and wood. But I can't remember exactly. Um, so yeah. I'll, like I said, when I use these and do the, the full um, video on the products, I'll give you the full details. But I'm really looking forward to these. I've heard good things thus far. And um, I have, just so you know, I have absolutely zero gripes with this kind of packaging. None. I don't give a fuck about boxes, tins, plastic tubs, boxes, uh, cardboard boxes, jars. I don't give a fuck about any of that. If you want to send, if you want to sell your shave soap like this, and it's good stuff worthy of using, I don't care about this packaging. I just want to put that out there. I know some people in the wet shaving community throw a fucking fit about anything that's not a low profile, you know, four or five ounce jar um, with waterproof labels. Waterproof labels is actually a must, but the low profile five ounce jar. I don't give a fuck about that shit. If you want to put it in a box, a tin, or just wrap it in paper like that, if your soap's good, I'll buy it. Just saying, I'm not one of those guys that gripes about that shit. All right, that concludes the mail call. We got a lot of good stuff here. I think everything on the table here, I'm gonna enjoy. I'm looking forward to using this shit. But that does conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I am definitely stoked. Yeah, I did that. Uh, cheers, guys. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one.